our thoughts on the last days and the end times. We started out in our Sunday school Bible study thinking about the end times and what it's going to be like in the end of the world and seeing what the Bible says versus what people say, what humanity says versus what people's opinion is. We're going to look at what the Bible says. We're going to go back to Matthew 24th chapter. We did not have a chance to go deeply in it. I will say that Sister Robinson gave a good synopsis during Sunday school of Matthew 24, and it kind of stirred me up. I said, and the Holy Ghost quickened me and said, go back to Matthew 24, and hear the conclusion of the whole matter. I got some questions for you that if you have a cell phone and, or a piece of paper, I would like you to write it down, write down a response or get it in your mind. One of the things about my particular teaching style, I said earlier, is interactive, okay? Um, another thing I want you to do is if you have a Twitter account, or if you have a Facebook account, or Instagram, if you're on the ground, or a Snapchat, I want you to start off by tweeting out, or you can text Matthew 24th chapter, The Last Days. Okay, my title is The Last Days, The End Times. So you can tweet out Matthew chapter 24, The Last Days. If you want to, you can put First Antioch Church or Antioch Church. Because what I'm doing is we're going to preach to the world. The internet allows us to get the message of Christ out to the world. Matthew 24th chapter, I think I'm going to go ahead and start reading before I go too far with it. Uh, Junior Deacon David, grab me a microphone, please. Um, and most of you know Madison, that's my two-year-old that's been dancing across the, the aisle. She photobombed me. We are recording this, by the way. This will be on YouTube because we are in the end times and people need to hear as much gospel as possible. It's enough garbage out there, amen? It's enough garbage out there already. It's pornography children have access to. It's gay porn out there. It's lesbian porn. It's bestiality. They have access to um, Nicki, Nicki Minaj, Megan Thee Stallion, and, and uh, 
Praise the Lord. Megan the Stallion, and what's the other one? The Cardi B, and all these different ones putting out garbage and stripper anthem and all this. And I always talk about bad and bougie from uh, whoever, the Migos, somebody like that. But now it's time for us to put some good, the goodness of the Lord out there. Amen. Somebody say, how you know about Megan Thee Stallion? I don't listen to that garbage. I just educate myself. Amen. There's so much out there. Uh, Lil Yachty, Lil Baby, Lil somebody, Lil Wayne. <laughs> little ghetto, I'm just making them up now. Little hood, little ratchet, I'm just making them up now. <laughs> it's time for us to put Jesus out there, okay? So if you could, do that for me. And maybe at least one time during the message, if you hear something that stands out to you that you, you, you really like or that you think somebody want to hear, your cousin, your little cousin, or your brother, or your friend, text it, tweet them or text them. That's what I like to do. Question for you though, I want you to think about or jot down. How often do you think about the end of the world? How often do you think about the end of the world or the last days? This is gonna be kind of morbid, uh, but how often do you think about death? How often do you think about death? What should we be thinking about? in terms of the afterlife. What kinds of things do we need to do to get ready? I'm just throwing questions out there. If you had to write something down, the main question would be, one of the main questions, what kinds of things do I need to do to prepare to meet God? What kinds of things do I need to do to prepare to meet God? And I, want to, I got a news flash for you. Because when I was young, a young person, I used to think the Bible and Christianity was for old folk. But if anybody need God, it's y'all young people today. Because the world is messed up for you guys. And y'all need Jesus in y'all life. Early as possible. Early as possible. I think I got somebody that agree with that. Amen. But what do we need to do to prepare to meet the Lord. What do we need to do, I'm bringing it to my lesson now, to prepare for the last days, for the end times? Go ahead and stand to your feet, turn to Matthew 24, Matthew 24th chapter. It's the first book in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 24 and one. Um, if, once you get it, go ahead and stand up so I can see who all got it. You can use your cell phone too if you want, Matthew 24. Praise the Lord, amen, amen. Because we believe in audience participation, I want everybody to get this. It's my responsibility to teach the gospel, not keep it to myself. Oh, I see children with a Bible open, Lord, I'm about to cry. The light, the world is not gonna end. You know, sometimes we think these babies are all messing up, but these babies, there's a lot of young people that are doing the right thing. Amen, they in their word, you can't do no better than me a young person in your Bible. All right, we're gonna read. And Jesus went out, Matthew 24 and one. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, see ye not all these things. In other words, do y'all see what's going on here? Verily I say unto you, truly I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another. In other words, all of these buildings will be gone at some point. This was back in ancient times, over 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was talking to them, about 2,000 years ago. He says, that shall not be thrown down. All those buildings are gonna be thrown down. Verse three, this is where we want to get to. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? So after the Lord got done speaking publicly to the people, the disciples pulled him to the side and did one of these. Hey, bro, what was that you was talking about? When these things gonna happen? What shall be the sign? This is the operative question. What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end 
end of the world. In other words, what should we be looking for for the end of the world? Don't you all agree that that's a question we should be asking today? Yeah. Raise your hand if you agree with that. What's the question? What should, what should we look for for the end of the world? What should we be looking out for? The disciples asked Jesus that. And the first thing he said was in verse 4. Verse 4. Matthew 24 and 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. You can be seated in the presence of God. Because I'm going to be going through more scripture. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing, but more so the doer of his word. Take heed that no man deceive you. No man, woman, boy, or girl deceive you. Take heed that you not deceived by these individuals in the world. Take heed that you're not deceived by Beyonce and Jay-Z. Everybody, you a Christian. Beyonce, you saved, everybody. <laughs> and she performing like that, and she supposed to be saved? Okay. <laughs> I would say it respectfully, like, excuse me, Mrs. Jay-Z, Mrs. Beyonce, but you know, according to my Bible, I got to say this as a preacher, you're just not behaving like a saved woman. You're not even behaving like a married woman should. But let me stop. I'm getting in trouble. Y'all love Beyonce. <laughs> if my wife was acting like Beyonce was publicly, we, are, you know, it'll, it'll be some problems. Like, uh, we, oh, this ain't working out. <laughs> yeah, she don't even dress like a lady. He helping me preach. <laughs> he helping me preach. I'm not targeting her. I could pick... A lot of these stars out there, I don't really know her personally. The Bible says you know them by their fruit. If I was embarrassing myself publicly like that, the church has a right to call me out too. Amen. Telling church girls to shake what their mama gave me, I'm putting it in my own terms, and saying that it's God's will. It's unholy and it's blasphemy. The Bible says in verse 4, to be careful that nobody deceive you. Take heed that you're not deceived. Deceive means trick. It reminded me when I used to live uh, in Mount Auburn, and I was, used to be downtown all the time. And there was this guy down there that had the three cups. You know the three cups they put the, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about? They put the, the little peanut in there, then he, he switched that thing around, and he do it slow first, Sister Dukes, so that you think you're gonna get, like, I see it right there. And it'd be all the suckers sitting around, like, well, I'm about to get this $20, I'm about to get this money. And he'd do it slow so you could see where the, the acorn is, whatever he put under the three cups. He had to pick which one it was in. And then he'd be like, $20, $20. He'd do it slow a few times. He'd be like, I see it. And he waits for a bunch of gullible people go around. We're talking about the word deceive. And they stand around. And then when you put your money down there, he'd do it super quick. <laughs> <laughs> and he get your money. I seen this little girl crying. That was her bus money. He had deceived her. He tricked her. And that's what I think about in the last days. We are deceived with religion. We are deceived with false religion. Biblical, non-biblical, spirit, any spiritual conversation that have, how, takes place outside of the Bible is false doctrine. Jesus said, come to him. I was deceived when I was in the world. When I was a young person, I didn't listen to anybody. We talked earlier about pride. I didn't like to listen to anyone. I was involved with the Crips. I was involved with gangs. And if I had continued in that lifestyle, I would have been just like my friends today. They are six feet under. And Antioch knows, I talk about my friends all the time. The reason I like to name their names is because I don't want to forget them. But I had so many friends in the city of Hamilton in Cincinnati that were murdered. They gave their life to the streets. They gave their life to the altar, Satan's altar of the streets. They sacrificed their life to the game. The, word, the game is not, the, the, the drug game is not anything to sacrifice anybody's life to. The drug game is Satan's game. And so when a person dies in the streets as a so-called soldier, they are giving their life to Satan. They're spending their whole life chasing them drugs and that violence. We had young people today, Mariana was talking about violence and racial tension in our conversation today. I was 
headed that way. I was deceived thinking that that lifestyle was cool, somehow fun. It ain't nothing fun about having a gun in your face. Amen. Nothing fun about being shot at, being jumped. Amen. Nothing fun about seeing your friends on drugs and seeing your friends go to prison when they're 18 and they come out when they're my age, I'm in my 40s. That's not fun. The devil don't show you that. All he show you is how fun it is at the jazz festival. We used to have the jazz festival and you'd be out there with your cars and all that. But behind is Satan. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come, verse 5, shall come saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Praise the Lord. Shall deceive many. Hallelujah. If you got a cell phone, text me and say, Amen, preacher. Text 513-628-1234. 513-628-1234. Text Amen, preacher. I want to see who paying attention. Praise the Lord while I go forward. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Maybe everybody don't have a cell phone because I ain't got no text yet. Well, I got a text from Simone. Praise the Lord. I got a text from Sister Martin. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him in the dance. The Bible says praise him in the dance. Hallelujah. I got somebody helping me preach. How many know you need mama? Of course, mama going to text me. Mom text, amen. Hallelujah. How many people know you need somebody help you to preach sometime? The Bible says this. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got my daughter on the keyboard. You know, it's a blessing to have your family in the church. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All my children are here helping me praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even though Madison be acting up, I thank God she's in the house of the Lord acting up. She's not in the crack house acting up. She's not in the club acting up. I don't have to, I'm not taking her to the casino with me. Hallelujah, while she acting up. I'm in the house of the Lord. The Bible says, many shall be deceived in verse 5. Saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. There's so many false prophets out there. Kanye West started his own church. And he sounded pretty good for a minute. But then I seen him with Marilyn Manson who like put out like satanic music and they had like this black church in the background. I don't know if the, that video was before or after his church. So we got to pray for people, man. Snoop Dogg had a gospel album and everything. <laughs> and it sounded pretty good. So I used to really be into Snoop when he was out. But you know, when I got saved, I don't listen to the weed music no more. I don't listen to that stuff no more. Smoking weed, get high, all dis disrespecting women and all that. All right, let me get in this word right quick because I'm running out of time. I got David text me, David Jr., Sister Harriet helping me preach. I got an amen from Sister Harriet. And there's a number that I don't know is from, uh, praise the Lord. Oh, the sister, Sister Duke, that the other Sister Dukes? Praise the Lord, amen. <laughs> sister Grace. Verse six, Matthew 24. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Amen. The gentleman in the back, God bless you. DeAndre. Amen. <laughs> I like this. The Bible says we're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. That's a well-known verse. See that ye be not troubled, for all things must come to pass. When you see us fighting, when you see Russia and you, you pray fighting, that is a sign of the end times. You still don't see wars increasing. The Bible is unfolding before our eyes. When you see the rise of white supremacists, when you see presidents like 45 that's encouraging the white supremacists. Amen. He was encouraging the racists yes. and the different ones that are part of the racist groups. He, was encour he encouraged the January 6th riot. That's a sign of the times. When you see somebody in the White House that's a stone racist. Yeah. Our president is supposed to be for everybody. He's not just supposed to be for the Caucasian people. He's supposed to be for African Americans, Hispanics, Chinese, all that. He blaming the virus on the Chinese people. All these kinds of things that's stoking hate. 
That is the sign of the times. Racism is increasing. There's more white supremacist groups, they said, than any other time in history. That's the devil behind that. There's the spirit of racism that wants to hate somebody because of the color of their skin, that wants to hate a black, little black girl for being just a black girl. And black is beautiful, by the way. The Lord made us beautiful. And it doesn't take away from anybody else. Anything that God made is beautiful. We can just be proud of the way God made us and our hair and everything and all this natural state. Amen. But we're in that time where people will rise up against each other. For nation, verse seven, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. We see an increase in earthquake saints. Verse 11, I'm gonna skip around a little bit. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. I've never seen so many false prophets, and all, a lot of them on, on Facebook. It is some real bad teaching out there. It's people teaching all kinds of stuff out there. Teaching folk how to meditate and pray to crystals. Stay in your Bible, saints. Don't let nobody talk to you about this other stuff. I have my friends, they get out of prison saying, I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim, man. I try to talk to them about the Lord. I'm a Muslim. Amen. That's that jailhouse religion. The Muslims, they go hard in jail. The Muslims be all on you. They protect each other. That don't mean it's right. Amen. But I started to say, when I was out in the world, I was involved in gangs. And a lot of my friends that were with me are no longer with us today on this earth. But we have to, but one of the things I did is remember to turn my mind to Jesus, turn my heart to Jesus. And he delivered me from that lifestyle. And now I'm excited about Jesus. I'm not ashamed and embarrassed that I'm a Christian today. Nobody's gonna shame me out of praising the Lord because he's done so much for me. I can't help myself. I couldn't even shut up if I wanted to. He Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If I wanted to stop, I couldn't. You got to understand what I'm saying. Because he took me from the hog pen. The Lord took me from the dump, from the bottom. I started from the bottom, now I'm here. I started from the bottom, now I'm here. I'm here serving Jesus. I'm here serving Jesus. My whole team is here. Oh, thank you, Lord. We serve the Lord together. I can't help it when somebody was shooting at me. The Lord spared my life. When they tried to jump me, the Lord had his hand on me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When many of my friends were getting locked up for life, in turning the drugs, the Lord snatched me and said, I got a different plan for you. I don't want that path for you. He's talking to somebody today. He said, give him your all. He wants to deliver you today. He's speaking to somebody today. He got work for you to do, my sister. He's got work for you to do, my brother. Little young sister, he's got work for you to do. The Lord says, this is your day. My young brother, God's got a plan for your life. Amen. And when the end time is here, it's here now. Yes. We don't have anything to worry about. Amen. Because we're going to go home with him. Yes. If we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to skip down to... Verse 38, and I'm going to be done. Verse 37. That same chapter, I want to be all done. And I want to, I'm, my Facebook is David Child. Just go to David Child. Or you can go to First Antioch, and you can post things there if you want. I just believe in preaching to everybody. Listen, we're going to read verse 37. 
on down and we're going to get out of here. Matthew 24 and 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It compares the last days. We were asking the question about the last day. What is it going to be like? It's going to be like the days of Noah. Hallelujah. My uncle used to sing a song called Put Your Time In. Payday is coming after a while. And when he was told about payday, he, would, he meant the last days in the rapture. And they compared it to punching in a clock on the job. And when it's time to put your time in, it's when it's time for the boss to look at your hours, you make that amount of money. So the soul took that payday and compared it to the rapture and the coming of the Lord. He said, put your time in, paydays coming after a while. Put your time in, paydays coming after a while. Put your time in, paydays coming after a while. Put your time in, paydays coming after a while. Put your time in, paydays after a while. Put your time in, the time, the opportunity to put your time in. That means give your life to Christ. When payday comes, it's going to be heaven. That's our reward. But the days of Noah happened in the days of Noah. Verse 38, for as in the days of Noah were, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. That's what people are doing now. Ain't nothing wrong with eating. Ain't nothing wrong with drinking. Ain't nothing wrong with drinking pop and soda. And <laughs> but uh, people are drinking today alcohol. They're making up new types of alcohol. Yeah. They're putting alcohol in energy drinks. Yeah. But marrying, ain't nothing wrong with getting married. But people are marrying different people, getting divorced, all these things. Married two, three people on TV, sister wives, got dude got the ugly dude got five wives. I don't understand this today. <laughs> I don't know what they see in him. He don't seem very smart, but all these women lined up to marry him. Desperate. <laughs> Wait on the Lord. <laughs> Send you the right person. And look, verse 39, I got to go. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So also shall be the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 40 is talking about the rapture. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. People are going to be walking. One going to be saved. The other's not going to be saved. He, gonna, he or she going to be worried about the world, worried about what their friends say, worried about their little outfit. What about their gear? Do I got the J's on? Am I drippy? Da 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 da. Stuff that don't have nothing to do with spiritual things in eternity, in heaven. And one gonna be saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost field. Might be singing, made a vow to the Lord, won't take it back. The Lord gonna come back, boom! He's gonna go to heaven, the other one's gonna be stuck on stupid, looking around like, where we say that? <laughs> That's an old term, like looking around like, What's going on? What's going on? You got to be ready. That's what verse, that's literally what verse 40 is saying. Two people are going to be walking down the street. Let me make it plain. Two people are going to be walking down Reading Road. One going to be saved. One going to be taken away. One going to be left behind on Reading Road in the hood. Two people are going to be walking up Victory Parkway or, 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 or the boulevard. Amen. Somebody gonna be taken, somebody gonna be left behind. Verse 41, it gets specific. Two women shall be grinding at the meal. In other words, they're gonna be at work. They're gonna be on the job. Praise the Lord, they're gonna be at McDonald's. They're gonna be wherever, Wendy's, doing their account work. Teacher, two women gonna be talking, grinding at the meal. The one shall be taken, the other shall 
the other left behind, left. This is the Bible, this ain't my opinion. I don't come up here and give my opinion. In verse 42, it's really the, click, the kicker, and I'm gonna stop at that particular verse. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. We don't know when the Lord gonna come back. You got all these people on here, I think he coming. He gonna come right on New Year's Eve. They said he was gonna come in 2000, in the year 2000. You don't know, but watch this. You're gonna either go, if you save, you're gonna either go through the rapture or through the death, through your grave. I've been through a lot of funerals lately. My cousin just passed, I told y'all last time, he wasn't even 50. He wasn't even 50. I had a cousin that was killed at 25, cousin Frenchman, 25 years old. Brother, brother uh, Minister, Minister Freeland, he just lost a cousin, Ricky, that was killed. Had the, we did the funeral, any I did the funeral. We've been going through a lot of funerals. I've preached my own father's funeral. That's the hardest thing I had to do. I preached my own father's funeral. And it, boy, it made me so serious about God. It made me like, I had to get everything right. I said, man, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to go with the Lord. So that's why I want us to be serious about this thing. Whether you agree or not, it's gonna happen. Whether you believe it or not, it's gonna happen, it's true. Well, you know, you can't, you can't get up there and argue with Jesus. Some people think they're good arguers. I'm a teacher, and some of my students think that they can argue with me about a grade. Like, it's either right or wrong. Like, you know, it's an F. <laughs> In fact, F plus. <laughs> If I made a mistake, I will admit it. Like, okay, my calculations are off. You know, let's redo the grade. And I'm happy to give you your B plus. I like giving good grades out. But if you don't know the material, you just don't know it. I'm sorry, you can argue with me to you, you know, red in the face. You know, black, if it's a black person, I don't know what happens. But if it's a Caucasian person, they can get red. So I'm like red in the face, you know. Uh, but you can't argue with Jesus. This is the opportunity, saints. We're gonna take an opportunity right now for you to make that decision or come back to the Lord. Uh, there's a lot of false teaching out there. And me and, me and I think me and uh, uh, Minister Friedman, we find ourselves saying a lot of the same things. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close my recording now. Praise the Lord, God bless you. Come on and clap. We're gonna say God bless you to the people. If you want, we want to get serious about this thing. In fact, let's just bow our heads for the people on the internet, and then I want to do a little ministry with the camera off. Lord, there's somebody out there that don't know you. It's my heart's desire that they will listen to this recording and say yes to Jesus. There's a young lady out there that's contemplating suicide. She feels like nobody loves her. And, and uh, she's starting to uh, exhibit self-harm and cutting. Lord, I pray that the love of Christ will enter her heart and speak to her and let her know that she's loved and that she got somebody that loves her. Same to the young man that's stuck in that lifestyle, the homosexual lifestyle. Let him be delivered and come to Christ. Hallelujah. There's somebody that's been away from a long time from the Lord. They don't know how to get back. Lord, bring them back with your love. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen, amen. Let's sing this song that I want to minister to somebody.